up, we have uh, Courtney Jackson. Now, Courtney, um, she's worked for over 20 years in information security and technology. Uh, she's helped government agencies, tech startups, uh, all kinds of commercial companies in protecting their business operations through cybersecurity and risk management solutions. She started in the US Navy and after she finished her service there, um, she moved on to a help desk and gradually worked her way up to, um, to the C-suite. Uh, and now she uh, is the founder and CEO of Paragon Cyber Solutions. So uh, welcome, Courtney. Thank you so much for the introduction. Hello, everyone. As we mentioned, I'm Courtney H. Jackson, cybersecurity expert. And I'm here to talk to you about cybersecurity awareness for online safety. Lee gave me a great introduction, so just touch on a few points here. I've been in the industry over 20 years. I served active duty Navy. I was an IT actually in the Navy and stationed in Italy, so that was fun. And I have a master's in information security, a number of certifications, and I work with a number of community organizations. But enough about me. So what will you learn today? The meaning of cybersecurity, and I'm sure you heard a lot of terms on that already. Uh, do's and don'ts of surfing the web and uploading content to the web. All right, what in the world is cybersecurity? Again, it's day two, so I'm sure you've heard a lot about it already, but I wanna read this definition here. A body of technologies, processes, and practices designed to protect networks, devices, programs, and data from attack, damage, or unauthorized access. That's a lot. But what I'm gonna to talk to you about is pretty much cybersecurity in the terms of protecting yourself when you're surfing the web online. So let's talk about some do's. So the first, when you're online, make sure the top of the browser has HTTPS enabled. So it looks just like it does over here. And you wanna make sure that, especially when you're entering any sensitive information, like your address or if you're checking out online, you want to make sure that you have that level of protection there. The second item, uh, use VPN when possible. So I actually have a teenage daughter and I asked her if she knew what VPN was and she said, yes, what I used to get to TikTok. I was like, oh, so I'm not endorsing that here, but in the terms of what I'm referring to VPN to, uh, it is a way to provide an encrypted tunnel while you surf the web. So it can protect your session from any bad guys looking for people to take advantage of online. And the third item is to communicate with your friends and people you know. Now it may seem like common sense, but is it? I mean, if you look at shows like Catfish on MTV, which I'm sure most of you have seen or at least heard of, where people start communicating with people they don't know, because on the other side of the screen, the person is presenting themselves as whoever they want to be. That's what online is, you know. So don't fall for it. Stick to communicating with the people you actually know online. And the fourth thing, keep your password and personal information private. So I know firsthand, some kids think it's okay to swap accounts and use each other's social media profiles, but that is a terrible idea. Just think about the friends you have today and some that you had years ago that you don't talk to anymore. Relationships change. So if you decide to share your login with someone, you likely won't have a light bulb moment that says, oh, let me go change my password if you stop talking to the person. You may forget. Meanwhile, that ex-friend still has access to your account. So it's just best to keep your information private and not to share it with anyone. The fifth item here, read all agreements before you click accept. Now, I know how tempting it is to just click accept or yes when you're trying to get to a website and it pops up with all this jargon that you don't feel like reading. But think about it like this. Like if someone presented you with a contract, would you sign it without reading it first? I hope the answer is no, you shouldn't. So it's the same thing. You should know exactly what you're accepting or agreeing to before you click that button online. And the final point on here is surf the web responsibly. 
Again, it's another topic that may seem like common sense, but we've seen in the news and online where celebrities have lost jobs and, and made posts that they lost credibility for. So just always be mindful of what you're posting. Let's talk about some don'ts. Do not use random Wi-Fi hotspots. So let me clarify this. So if you're at McDonald's or Starbucks and you want to use their Wi-Fi, that's not random, that's public. But make sure you use VPN that I mentioned earlier if you do that. But by random, I'm referring to unknown Wi-Fi hotspots. Let's say you're at a park or you're out somewhere and you need to get online, so you just search for available hotspots and something pops up that says free Wi-Fi here or for TikTok users. You know, they're just traps to try to get you to connect because they're likely trying to steal your personal information. So definitely don't fall for that. The second thing, do not accept friend requests from strangers. I don't know if you've seen this show or heard of it, but there was a show that used to come on years ago called To Catch a Predator. So my kids think the show, is, they think it's creepy, but I think it's educational because on the show, they would catch grownups that attempted to lure kids online that they could meet in person. And it, it, work, it actually works in real life, but in this case, Chris Hansen would show up and be there with the cops and, you know, they'd catch the person, but everybody's not that fortunate. There really are people online that try to lure your age group to meet in person. So just make sure that you don't accept friend requests from strangers or communicate with strangers online. Third item, do not post any of your personal information online. So there is really no reason to ever post this type of information like your address or definitely not your social security number. You don't want to have bad credit before you even turn 18. <laughs> but thinking about a site called Evite, you've probably seen it before where people send out email invitations and I've seen where people have house parties and they post their home address right in the Evite for everybody to see. So that's an example of a bad idea. You know, a better way to do that would be to send out the evite and for the address, just put a note that says, you know, address to be shared with confirmed attendees. And then you can provide your address directly to people afterwards, but don't just post that stuff online. The fourth item, do not believe messages, posts, or websites that seem too good to be true because they often are. I know it can be tempting. You get an email that says, click here for a free $50 Amazon gift card. I mean, who doesn't shop at Amazon? But think about it. There really aren't a lot of random free things in the world. So why would you receive a gift card just for clicking the link? Just don't fall for it. Next item. Do not use easy to guess passwords. Uh, let's say you're, you have a dog named Buttons and you and Buttons you know, you post on your social media, you're taking walks and going to the park and how much you love buttons. So obviously a terrible password would be, or password would be, I love buttons or just me and buttons. That's like too easy to guess. Because there are people online doing recon. They're looking at everything you post and they can put stuff together to gain valuable information about you. So just make sure you at least make it more difficult for them to guess your password. Don't use anything that identifying. And the last point on here, do not open emails from strangers. So let's say you receive an email from someone named John Smith and the subject is, you know, OMG, you have to see this. So naturally that curious part of you want to click on it. Like, what is this person? You don't even know who John Smith is, but you're like, what are they sending me? You just want to click on it, but you have to take a minute to think because a lot of times that's a trap. All right, let's talk about uploading and posting content to the web. So a few points here, make sure what you post is appropriate. That may not seem important right now, but you know, we're making history. Like you may run for office one day, right? And the last thing you wanna do is when they look at your background and your past for them to see you know, inappropriate posts that you may have made. And you're like, oh, I was only 15, but that stuff sticks with you. So 
just be mindful of what you're posting and just think it, it really doesn't go away. And that's the second point. Know that nothing is ever truly deleted. Once you upload it, it's online forever. Think about, you know, celebrities that make tweets and it's offensive. So their PR agent tells them, take it down, delete it. They delete it, but not before a thousand people got screenshots of it. And then in addition to that, it's still on server somewhere. So even though you hit delete and it may not be seen to the naked eye, it's still out in the world. So make sure you're careful. And the final point here, only upload information about yourself. So it's not to say if you're at a family reunion or some event, you can't upload pictures with your family and your cousin you haven't seen in 10 years or whatever it may be. I'm referring more to general posts like a friend that has an outfit on that you think is cute, but they might hate it. You know, things get misinterpreted. So it's best to just post information about yourself just so you don't put yourself in those types of situations. All right, so just to go over a few things again, remember everything we talked about in the session. You should start practicing anything that you're not doing already immediately. Share these tips with your family and friends. And this isn't meant, this was not meant to scare you. It's just the reality that the internet can be dangerous, but it's also fun. Just make sure that you're implementing some security practices so you can have a safe experience. This is just my contact page, but for you, the most relevant would probably be the bottom. Cyber Courtney is my consumer page. You can follow me there and then choose Paragon is my corporate page. And that concludes the presentation. Thanks for watching. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Courtney. That was really good. Um, so <clears throat> there's a few questions here for you. So you mentioned about using VPNs and that what seems to be a lot of the questions are about. Um, let's see. If someone uses a VPN, can they still have their actions tracked online? Well, they're, they're still possible. They're all depending on how sophisticated the hacker is. VPN is just an additional layer of protection. So it encrypts your traffic, so it's not in clear text. And on top of that, you can change your location to what it appears to be online. Like, for instance, I use VPN every time I'm online. I'm in Florida, but my VPN connection is from Illinois. So you can still be tracked, but it just adds a layer of protection. Very cool. Um I mean, how successful are the VPNs in, in being uh, uh, that extra level of protection that you need? There have been some good use cases about it. Um, there's a vast VPN, there's Nord, there are a lot of different vendors and I'm not, you know, specifically recommending any one in particular, but um, there have been some good use cases about it. Again, it's nothing's a hundred percent, you know, it's just a matter of putting certain security practices in place to reduce your risk of attack or exposure. And that's just one of those steps. Okay. And then for like the personal security side of things, um, it, is it, if you receive an email, you don't know who uh, the sender is, is it still safe to open that even if you don't click any of the links inside? No. No, I, I don't recommend open at all. I don't open emails from anyone I don't know. Um, hacks are so sophisticated nowadays. Granted, when you click links, that makes you more susceptible to hacks, but even opening an email could potentially make you susceptible to something. So I would just recommend steering clear from emails from people that you don't know. Okay, good stuff. Um, there's a few other questions rolling in here. Uh, let me see. So, okay, yeah, so this has come up actually a couple of times throughout the day, and I think you may be probably really well suited to answer this. But if you do come across someone um, who's done something wrong online, how do you go about reporting them? So it depends. If you're talking about something that you may have seen, you know, on a social media account, they have report links there that you can use. 
Um, and then online, they have internet safety centers. There's a ton of them. So you can report, it just depends on the, the nature of what it is. And then going back to my earlier point about to catch a predator, there are specific resources online that uh, you should reach out to if you know someone were to try to lure you. So it really depends on the nature of the event. But again, if it's in terms of you know something that happened on a social media account, um, that would be the first thing to report it there because a lot of times they can get the account closed down if they receive enough malicious reports. <laughs>